Hi, I am Sal Hound. I am the creator of Commander Rao and And We Love You. You can find me on Twitter at Falhound underscore or my website at falhoundart.com. And you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It's 11 questions, about 15 minutes long, give or take, depending on our guest's answer. And we're joined by very talented creative people in the entertainment industry. So who is our guest today? She is a very talented comic artist and writer and illustrator. You've seen her work, uh, of course, from Commander Rao and her newest book, And We Love You. We're joined today by the ever-talented Fell Hound. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you, Kurt? Doing good, doing good. So this is our last episode of 2022, which will be released later. So thank you so much for being a fellow Canadian and coming on the show. I am happy to be here. I did not know you were Canadian, but that's awesome. <laughs> for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. I am a writer and a illustrator from Toronto. I'm probably best known for making uh, my sci-fi action one-shot Commander Rao. And I have a follow-up to that coming out in February from Scout Comics called And We Love You. It's a very sad, gay love war story, and I'm very excited to get that out in stores and have people read it. <laughs> you know, looking at the world that you've built here with, of course, Commander Rao and, and We Love You here, it feels like I'm going to run those sentences together, even though I know <laughs> okay. they're two separate books. Tell us how you came about building the world for this amazing, these amazing series. Honestly, I was um, very uh, inspired by, believe it or not, like, the French Revolution for Commander Rao. I was very um, into like anime and manga, such as The Rose of Versailles and Innocent Rouge. And I also really, really love to draw like sci-fi armors and tanks and everything. So I thought I'd combine the two and have something with like, you know, French Revolution aesthetics with like a sci-fi under motif. And then that just kind of how it came to be. And I really wanted to practice drawing fight scenes. So I was like, okay, for Commander Rao, I'm just going to combine everything and make it like a really cool fight scene with really cool aesthetics. And honestly, a lot of the world building was built on the fly based on just what I wanted to draw at the time, which was all three of those things. And it just kind of slowly came together in that way. No, I always find nameology kind of fascinating because it kind of gives you a glimpse into the mind of a creative person. Tell us about some of your main characters, of course, with Commander Rao and and We Love You. Obviously, And We Love You is a prequel to uh, Commander Rao, I believe. So in Commander Rao, it is about Commander Rao. Uh, it is about this um, rogue uh, soldier who is on a quest for revenge and she's out to destroy an evil baron. And there's a lot of secrets to uncover along the way as to why exactly she's after this evil baron. And then in And We Love You, we actually take a look at a side character who is in Commander Rao, but this time it's telling her story. Um, her name is Julie and she had a very important role to play in, uh, I guess, Commander Rao's life. And we just kind of see that moment that kind of orchestrated everything that set Commander Rao off, you know, into her little murder spree against the Baron. What's the most misunderstood aspect about anime and manga that maybe people who don't follow it uh, mistake? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I, I haven't seen a lot of people really misunderstand it in that way, I guess. I guess for me, mostly, I'm just like a huge fan of it. So I don't really uh, pay too much attention to what other people are, are saying that might be negative about it. Um, I do hear a lot of people comparing it to, I guess, Western comics and like how the audience kind of differs. Like in Western comics, it's mostly superheroes. We all we have like a little bit, um, I guess, wider genres in anime and manga. But honestly, I think the two kind of can coexist and that they're both offered different but really amazing things. <laughs> And I think it just depends on what you like to read. But now I have to ask, what is your top three favorite manga or anime? Ooh, okay. My favorite. So I am like obsessed with this anime right now called Gundam, The Witch for Mercury. I used to be a massive Gundam fan when I was a kid. And like this new Gundam show is just everything to me. Uh, I don't know why. And top three. Um, I really love Re Revolutionary Girl Yutna. You know, sword, sword ladies, very queer, absolute 90s classic. 
Uh, I really love The Rose of Versailles. <laughs> As I've mentioned, it really inspired Commander Rao. And I am reading this um, like Chinese manga right now called My Dear Lass. It is very beautiful. It's about like these, um, <laughs> like a queer peach farmer who like falls in love with this baker who's new to town and it's slice of life and it's very cute and very beautiful and I'm like completely obsessed with it. But yeah, that's off the top of my head. Those are probably my favorites right now. What are three manga or anime that you looked at maybe early in your journey into these uh, artistic series that you at first didn't enjoy, but later in life you thought, man, why was I sleeping on this? To be honest, it's probably most anime and manga. I didn't actually grow up watching a lot of anime or reading a lot of manga. I was one of those people who like didn't like black and white art. I really liked color. I don't know. I, it just really took a long time for me to get into it. I did get started first on like Western comics and, you know, Western cartoons. I think having things like Avatar and Legend of Korra, which is kind of in between that line of like Western and more anime-ish, I think that kind of was sort of like a bridging point for me to slowly get started into more anime and manga stuff. And then eventually, so, you know, as a queer person, I really enjoy queer media. And at some point, I think <laughs> you just couldn't find a lot of it in American media. So then I had to like branch out and then I found all these like queer mangas and animes. And I was just like, okay, that's what we're doing now. And that's kind of how I got involved in it. <laughs> My anime journey specifically actually was like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball. So it was like, uh, like classics classics yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah that kind of set me on my on the path of just kind of watching anything and everything it's, it's amazing just the style and the art and the animation that you know that we've enjoyed for all these years oh 100 i am also a big sailor moon fan i haven't watched as much dragon ball but i love sailor moon <laughs> <laughs> what was the first thing that you ever created either written or illustration that you thought yes i could do this as a career Ooh, hmm. <laughs> to be honest, as a career, probably Commander Rao, because I think that was the one, the first one that really kind of took off in any sort of, I, I guess, meaningful way. I've made a bunch of small comics before that. Like I have a like a comic zine called Do You Believe in an Afterlife? That was kind of a mix of comics and prose. That was really just me trying to bridge between drawing illustrations and making a full narrative story. Um, I've made some really awful <laughs> comics before that that didn't look professional at all. But I think the first one that really was like, oh, people... People like what I make was Commander Rao. <laughs> what was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Ooh, I think it's probably the first book that ever made me cry, mm -hmm. which was Stone Fox back in grade two. It's about dog sled racing. And it, I think it was this kid who was trying to like win a dog sled race to like save his grandpa's farm. And it was extremely sad. And uh, spoiler alert, the dog died. And I don't think I've ever like emotionally recovered from it. I think just, you know, being a little kid and reading this book that made me cry. I was like, wow, maybe when I grow up, I can make books that make other people cry and have that have the same effect as it did on me throughout all these years. <laughs> so then looking at yourself as a creative person that you are, what are three things that you've accomplished that you are proud of? And what are three creative tasks you are looking forward to accomplishing in the near future? Yeah, so I mean, I'm really proud of Commander Rao. Um, obviously, like I said, it's kind of the first one that really kind of took off in any way. So I'm, I'm very proud of that story. I'm, I really like it. Uh, I, I guess the Ringo nomination, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm very grateful for that as well. I'm proud of the friends and the community I've made in the comic book industry. I think that's really kind of special to me. Like, I, I love all the friends I've made, and it really makes it fun. So I'm really grateful and proud of that. And huh, three things that I kind of want to work on, I guess. Uh, I, I really want to do more fantasy stuff. So I really want to work on drawing more like fantasy storytelling. I, I really want to find kind of a simpler art style for my comics work because right now it feels very involved and I don't work very fast. So I want to find ways to speed up my work. I don't know. I think it's it's kind of tough navigating the industry right now because there's a lot of a bit of a depressing news. <laughs> and I think it's just trying to find ways to keep yourself grounded and keep yourself loving what you do, even when the news kind of gets to you. <laughs> Regarding Scout Comics, how did they find you or did you approach them to publish Commander Rao and, and We Love? Yes, I kind of just pitched it to them. Um, after my Kickstarter was over, I just 
sent it to them through their submissions portal. And then luckily I heard back and they were really into it. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't any kind of magic or anything. I just sent them the email through the website. <laughs> what do they give you in terms of being a publisher to showcase your work elsewhere? Pretty much my my distributor to the direct market. Lots of stores carry Scout Comics. But yeah, I mean, I think getting that wider reach and getting your books out in shops is really cool. And obviously Scout has a lot of connections to these shops. So getting it out there on the store shelves is really cool. But yeah, I, I know Scout, they also have like a bunch of, they do have a lot of, I guess, connections to Hollywood stuff from what I know. So there's always a chance that, you know, if, somehow your book lands with the right person or sees the right people, they might be able to help connect for an option or something. And I know they do a lot of those whatnot streams. I've never personally gone into them, but I know that's a thing they do to try to help sell your book. So yeah. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Artistically, I would probably say J.H. Williams because I think like Batwoman Elegy was the comic that got me into comics and I have always been like just absolutely in love with the layouts he did on that book. And I think that was the first time it really opened my eyes into, into what the medium is capable of because his layouts are so involved and visually stylistic. Like I've never seen anything like it and that's kind of what I wanted to do one day with my storytelling. It's just tell something that looks really awesome. <laughs> Honestly, probably J.H. Williams and by extension, Greg Rickard, who made Batwoman Elegy together. Like, I absolutely love that book. So yeah, probably have them. <laughs> From a professional standpoint, you've created two amazing series. You've been illustrated for many years and you continue to do some amazing work professionally in that regard. So you are successful. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Yes. <laughs> I consider myself more successful than when I first started. <laughs> I feel like success is one of those things that's very impermanent. Even when you achieve something, the goalposts keep moving. Like two years ago, before I really got into comics, I never really believed my books would get this far. I didn't really plan on getting my books published. I didn't plan on them getting Ringo noms and all that. Everything kind of moved very fast and I'm still kind of processing it. <laughs> I think it's important to realize how far you've come. So in that way, I feel like there is a success to it. I think there's always more to do and more to achieve. You got to remind yourself not to get trapped into always chasing something. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? I am an awful impulse buyer, as you might be able to tell, because I have literally shelves of stuff in the background. Um, so whenever I get sad, which failure included, I will just buy things to cheer me up. And mostly it's books or video games. I kind of just lose myself into a good book or video game for a couple weeks until I forget my failure. And then I would just come back to it and pretend nothing's wrong. <laughs> it's not the healthiest way, but it's a way. Now I have to ask, what was your what was your last impulse purchase? I literally just brought some books like two days ago. They just arrived. It was more more manga recommended to me by a friend. One is called Pulse and the other one is called Run Away With Me Girl. So I am very excited to dive into those tonight. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I, I think the most inspirational people can be right now is just to also be kind and uplifting and build a community. I have found that a rising tide lifts all boats. And if you want to inspire, you can't just make good work. You have to kind of lead by example and be a decent person <laughs> to the new generation. I, I think it's important to really com continue fostering like a healthy community, you know, make comics in and just, yeah, uplift others and be a good person. <laughs> If your life was a comic book or, or a movie or an anime or manga, whatever the case may be, whatever medium it may be, what would its title be and what would its soundtrack be? Oh, that's a question that requires some thought. Oh my gosh. I'm terrible think? because I don't watch a lot of movies. So I feel like I don't have a lot of a huge base to be inspired by. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's kind of really telling for what my movie would be named. It would probably just be like the life of a struggling, shy, queer person. <laughs> Soundtrack. Oh, my God. 
I mean, I feel like I really like Hans Zimmer. I think mm-hmm. they make some really dope soundtracks. It probably won't be extremely fitting for a movie about my life because I feel like my life would probably be some kind of like slice of life comedy thing. You know, I think I think having like Hans Zimmer do a really epic soundtrack to it would be very ironic. So I, I'd go with him. <laughs> Well, Phil Hound, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had so much fun answering all these questions. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, so uh, I am still on Twitter. <laughs> you can find me at Felhound underscore. And if you have moved on from Twitter, then you can also find me on Instagram at fell.hound. I'm also on Tumblr. Uh, if you type in Felhound, you can probably find me. If you Google Felhound, you can probably find me. There's also a Raid Shadow Legends character called Felhound. So just don't look at that one and find the one that says Felhound Artist. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I have a book coming out, uh, and We Love You comes out February 1st. Um, you can pre-order it right now from your local comic book shop. Um, it's going to be really, really moving, really sad. Um, if you like queer war stories, if you like love stories, then it's going to be a good book for you. Indie books kind of live and die by pre-order support, so please consider pre-ordering. <laughs> Well, like I said, that ends up this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word, two, not the number two. And, of course, on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website because my website's going through issues and my YouTube is just a lot more updated. So it is what it is. You can, of course, find all of my social media accounts on our link tree, which is linktree.com forward slash two geeks talking. That's the word, not the number two. And of course, as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.